um, photograph the medium collection. Jenny, thanks for coming here today and filming my jumper collection. My pleasure. And thank you for being the guest on my show. Later on we're going to talk about the art of a photographer. Now Jenny, you've been a photographer for a long time and very, very well respected in the industry, haven't you? Mm. Yes, and um, it actually all came about as a bit of a surprise to me through the Dalai Lama. Really? So photographing the Dalai Lama when he first came to Australia in 1982 and it's led to all sorts of things. So um, I love being a photographer and uh, yes, I'm only too pleased to be here today. It's so interesting how something in the past, 1982 is quite a long time ago, can lead you on a, on a certain life journey. It certainly is and uh, I find it fascinating the way life unfolds and things unexpectedly come your way and uh, so I like to be as open as possible to <laughs> what the universe supplies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, at the moment the universe has supplied me with an enormous amount of jumpers because I've been... Um, I've wanted to do a book and it's been in my head for a long time called Knit Your Way to Good Health. Now when I first started knitting a couple of years ago it was considered very daggy but I've since discovered that one of the crazes um, sweeping America at the moment is knitting and a lot of high-flying gentlemen who um, work the stock market who have to go to psychiatrists and whatever for stress relief are now being told to go home and take up knitting as an excellent way to get rid of your stress and also a lot of famous actresses and whatever are taking up knitting. Now I've discovered it's a very therapeutic way to get rid of your stress. So as you can see by the pile of jumpers in my jumper collection, I, um, I've had a very stressful last two years and it's been wonderful for my stress. I find that if you're in a situation where you're very, very stressed and you can even feel a panic attack coming on, what you do is you pick up your knitting needles and you count. You count the stitches. Well, I won't bore you with all my personal details about my stress levels, but the last few days I've been extremely stressed, so this is a little thing that I'm just knitting. Now, I don't use a pattern because it's something that I don't know how to do. <laughs> so what you do, you buy wool that you find really interesting and then you just design something around it. Now, this funny looking thing is actually going to be a jerkin when it's finished. Now, the other thing about knitting, you can break all the rules. And what I'm actually doing is knitting the back upside down. But anyway, <laughs> I'll keep you posted on how this one turns out. In the meantime, I'd like to introduce you to Nicole, our wonderful model who's here today to show you Jan's jumper collection. So. Okay, so I'd like to introduce you to the model today, and her name's Nicole. Nicole, this is a very brave thing, and I do appreciate this, but I couldn't find anyone lovelier in the world to model my collection. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> now, Nicole's wearing, um, it isn't technically a jumper, it's my dressing gown, which goes with an enormous amount of stress, and I won't bore you with the story behind this one either, but um, it's so warm and so cuddly that I've nearly worn it out. That's why I needed these photographs to be taken fairly soon <laughs> before the winter's over. So um, that's Jan's dressing gown. So if you'd like to turn around. Yeah. Now this is actually knitted, it's knitted upside down. The back is, this is actually the bottom and it's knitted that way. And then the top is knitted in the more conventional way going up. And the the trim around it is actually crocheted. Oops. <laughs> Better sew it back together again there. But it's crocheted and I've discovered that crocheting on a on a quite a heavy knitted garment gives it quite a bit of structure around that main thing. Now there's a lot of engineering that comes into knitting. And in fact, in my times of archiving women in multimedia, the, the, the same process of reading a knitting pattern is actually writing a computer program. So any woman out there who can read a knitting program can go and do computer programming. So 
Mm, Good luck. <laughs> okay. Do you want the mic out? Back. Back. Back door. Okay. Yeah, so you take that. So you take this one. And then you can get all this done. Okay. Happy with that? Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, so this one is called Nicole <laughs> and it's eight ply uh, mohair wool with a collar and cuffs that are knitted with a fabric fur called faux fur. It's made in Turkey, it's polyester. It isn't really a wool, but it's, I call it fluffy rat it's wool. So soft. It's so soft. And if you're allergic to wool, it's really good to have around your neck. So, looks beautiful on you, Nicole. Okay, so Jenny's going to take a, a photo. You know, the great thing about this is, is that it's not, it's not like around your neck. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's really quite. Now, if you stand back a little bit. No, it really suits you, Nicole. Goes with your colouring. Just behind your ear, so I can see your ear. Like that. That's good. And this way. You'd be amazed at the people's hair I've arranged. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't arranged the Dalai Lama's hair though, he hasn't got enough. Okay. I have been tempted to take up knitting again and I found this book Knitting with Dog Hair and it really appeals to me. <laughs> it says The Definitive Guide to a New Exciting and Ecologically Friendly Hobby. This sensational easy to use tip filled guide is the perfect gift for every dog lover and every knitter. So stop vacuuming all the hair that results after brushing your dog and start knitting instead. When I look at my dog, I see the source of a saucy little beret. Hey Billy, come here. Come on. Come here. What do you reckon, eh? <laughs> I have a new name and my new name is Granny Wood. So I'm now grandmother to a delightful little fella. So I'm going to try and articulate the experience of becoming a grandmother for the first time. And one thing I learned is once you're a grandmother, you can't kid yourself that you're 21. <laughs> but anyway, it's all good stuff. Yeah, so I might have, I said to her, why don't I knit him a pair of dog hair booties? <laughs> and she said, no. So I might have to knit something for myself. On the 4th of June, uh, Four girlfriends and I are having an exhibition to celebrate uh, World Environment Day. If you had watched the show two weeks ago, you would have seen us as we were 12 years ago. And I'd like to point out that the technology 12 years ago was so primitive to, compared to how it is now. Everything's so changed in the last few years. For instance, six years ago, if you were walking down the street and you saw someone talking to themselves, you just assumed they were schizophrenic. But now when you walk down the street, everyone's talking to themselves. And you just assume that they're doing their banking or running their home business or buying theatre tickets. It's also changed. So while I was making this show, I know I've been working on my short film um, for the exhibition. And it's I've been trying to translate energy field patterns <coughs> as metaphors for the seven deadly sins. So I've been researching the seven deadly sins and um, one of the easiest ones was sloth. Now sloth is laziness, sluggishness and for sloth I've got rubbish floating on the harbour and then my plan is to turn it into a metaphor for a human energy field and so that image becomes psychic garbage. 
So that's where I'm up to on that. Now Jenny Templin came a couple of days ago, the, the wonderful Jenny Templin. And I turned the camera on, as I tend to do. And after she left, I was looking at the footage and it had this strange energy pattern through it. And, um, but I thought the content of what she was saying was more important than this interference. But I decided I would leave it in because it is a reminder that we are all living in these huge electromagnetic fields and you don't often see you don't often see the electromagnetism but when you see this footage you can see the electromagnetic field of Jenny's laptop and how it has interfered with my video film so I hope you forgive me that dodgy little thing <laughs> anyway I hope you enjoy the program So it's now May 2006 and Jenny's just dropped in again and um, she brought her laptop, her photos and Jenny what's it like watching yourself on TV as you were six years ago? Uh, well it's fairly dated by the equipment I was using and also by the glasses, um, they've both changed a fair bit uh, and coincidentally I now use digital equipment uh, which I actually got turned on to using when I was the official photographer for the last visit of the Dalai Lama um, because I borrowed a digital camera and immediately fell in love with it and uh, persuaded the owner to sell it to me so I now have an enlightened digital camera <laughs> and uh, this last image here uh, is um, His Holiness up on stage in the Entertainment Centre uh, addressing um, thousands and thousands of people and uh, this image was um, on the, published on the cover of the book of the teachings that he gave during that visit. And you go to India quite a bit, don't you? Yes, I've just returned a matter of days ago from being with my teacher uh, who lives in Gangtok, Sikkim and uh, I was there for two months and really didn't want to come back but I teach a lot of photography so uh, I had to come back for my 80 or so students. Okay, now you love dogs. You're, I've discovered there's different kinds of people. There's uh, cat people, dog people, reptile people, bird people and you're definitely a dog person. Yes, anybody that knows me knows I'm nuts about dogs <laughs> and that I will cross the street to talk to a dog. Uh, and then I might start talking to the owner. But um, I am passionate about dogs. And in fact, even in India, uh, I'll make overtures to the street dogs. And once I remember walking along with my llama and, uh, you know, this dog was madly wagging its tail, uh, but its behaviour was a little bit strange. And uh, he immediately stopped me from doing that and said, look, you know, whatever you do, um, you've got to be very careful. We were in Bengal at the time because Bengal has one of the highest incidences of rabies and uh, sure enough this dog I think was rabid mm. because it was wagging its tail but frothing at the mouth at the same time so <laughs> I'm a little bit more cautious now. <laughs> okay. Now you were telling me you went to the RSPCA walk? Yes, Mini and Paul's walk on Sunday morning and uh, I've gone to quite a few of these and I find it absolutely extraordinary to see hundreds and hundreds of dogs together having the time of their lives and all on their best behaviour. I think they're all so blown out to be in the company of so many other dogs that um, they don't misbehave and it's just wonderful and it's hilarious to see what some people do with their dogs. And you've got some photos <coughs> on your laptop? I do. <laughs> uh, mm, it's just a matter of finding them. Okay, so here's a big, very big dog with a very pretty little collar. He's a very cool dude. Yes, he's quite cool. It's, this one's a little fairy. <laughs> Isn't she cute? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Jenny, they're so cute. And this one's wearing sunnies as well. Cool. And then we've got a family that were 
super dog and they had two boys dressed as little supermen but they, it was very hard trying to get them to stay still. Um, and then, quite like, I don't think this was a permanent tattoo <laughs> on his back, but perhaps it was, not sure. <laughs> this was at uh, Fair Day. <laughs> uh, much loved dog, as you can see. Mm. So Jenny, tell us a little about your current projects. Uh, well, I've got a few on the boil at the moment. Uh, the next one in the immediate future is an exhibition in its state parliament uh, in the month of July uh, about Aboriginal reconciliation, very topical. And uh, it's uh, two groups of school children, one from Brewarrina and the other from Moringa, uh, and they're photographs of their lifestyles and where they live. And uh, photographs I took around Australia with the Sea of Hands uh, about six years ago. Uh, and uh, another very exciting project I'm working on is um, taking a photographic safari uh, to a remote area of India, Gujarat, the state of Gujarat, which is up in the northwest. Uh, it's a desert area where there are wonderful textile artisans and uh, very colourful people and it's a very rare opportunity through uh, the relationship an Australian wo woman called Carol Douglas has with these uh, tribal people. So um, I've been teaching photography for years and my students, because of my passion for photography and for India, have been persuading me to do something like this for a long time. So January this year, for two weeks, from the 3rd of January to the 17th, uh, this trip, it's called Caravan to Kutch, uh, will be taking place. So Um, hi, I'm Ginny Hanmer and I'm passionate about art. Um, I work out of number 47 in Ralston, so anybody's welcome to pop in and have a look any time you like. We do a whole lot of stuff. We're really into um, printing and fabric at the moment. I also throw pots uh, and decorate them. I do a lot of affirmation work. Um, I guess I'm a, mainly a poet, so I do a lot of writing. I try and write on material. Sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does. Um, I do, we'll have a go at anything. We, we do screen printing, we do jobs for local people. That's a, a very important part of the work from there. But we also do kind of unusual wacky stuff as well. Um, we've just made a, a great goanna, which we love. And um, a lot of my work focuses on practicality, bringing the sort of quirky into, into the practical realms of your life like, you know, painted sock savers and um, hot water bottle covers and, um, and also things, just having beautiful things around you like the prayer flags or, or something nice at the bottom of the bowl when you've finished eating whatever's in it. Um, another thing that I do quite a lot of is um, curation work. And that's how I ended up coming across the suitcase exhibition. And um, we actually had that exhibition in the shop in Ralston for a couple of months last year, and it was also somewhere else locally. Um, a few people in included work and in, the, in the show, um, and it had a great response. A lot of people um, found it really great to be looking at an exhibition that was just a, a mixture of all kinds of mediums and and also just the celebration of being women even though you know m many of the work focused on quite difficult issues um there was the the sort of sense of um of celebration some of the works that were um don't put in the in the suitcase in this area is this piece is a collage um on, on the theme of um guitars by Christine McMillan this is a, um, a, a copy of a very large fantastic painting by Melanie Pegg. On the back she's got, as individuals we decide what's sacred. And this piece over here is a, a print by Eunice Maddock um, from her sort of work on, on um, women and bodies. I loved, I loved all the different 
I loved these pieces. I loved um, the kind of um, the almost almost a kind of in your face part of it the fact that women were saying here we are and these are all the stages of our lives and we're not going to hide away at all um i love the softness there's some beautiful soft pieces that one there is just incredibly soft and there's so much movement and pleasure and and sensuality in that it's just lovely um it's a lot of written work which of course i like the look of a lot of poetry about sort of separation um about sexual assault, about out there, in in the, you know the in in life, and people are kind of um, it's very internal work, which suits me. I'm very um, I'm very keen on bringing inner work to the outer, so that sort of celebrates the connection between women and the and the the bringing out of the inner um, knowledge of women to each other there's also a kind of sense of um in in the connection between women there's that sense of um we're all in this together and um whatever that might be and and there's humor there's huge humor it's just great i love that this is a really great one too just a lot of really collage work and and the fact that it's just given, there's no formality, that it's just given from, from one person to another and it just travels the way it wants to travel for as long as people want it and then it, you know, eventually, well, every now and then returns to, to Jan and then she gets to look at all the great things that are in the suitcase and then it goes off again on another trip. Well, one time I was actually um, sitting on my couch, I was living with my brother Tom, and he comes home and he goes, hi Max, how you doing? I go, all right, and he goes, Max, there's a better couch down on the corner. And I go, what do you mean, someone's thrown out a couch that's better than this one that we found? And he goes, yeah, it is. And I went, oh, well, all right then. So we grab one end of the couch each, we sort of turn it sideways, we walk it out the door, we walk it down the road, and we sit where this other couch is. It was, the couch we had was a, cotton floral tacky design. This one that we got was like a black vinyl thing. So, you know, anyway, picked it up, carried it in, put it down, sat it down. I went, yeah, Tom, that is better. This couch is better. And then I got up, went down the road to do my, my things and the couch that we dumped, someone had already taken into their home. So we swapped a couch and someone had already taken that couch and it was kind of a just one of those things <laughs> <laughs> thanks for sharing that <laughs> <laughs> that's right